Sugars are everywhere. They are the building blocks of carbohydrates, the most abundant type of organic molecules in living things. Sugars are made from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, but can take many forms. Simple sugars, or monosaccharides, include glucose and fructose. Granulated sugar is a disaccharide called sucrose, and there are longer chain sugars called oligosaccharides. Sugar is an important source of energy. During digestion, all food carbohydrates break down into single molecule sugars. These sugars are absorbed from the intestine into the bloodstream and travel to our cells. They're used as an energy source there. When you add sugar to water and start to heat it, the sugar crystals dissolve. This mixture is called sugar syrup and is the basis of many sweets. If you heat the mixture more, the water evaporates and the concentration of the sugar increases. But you can't dissolve an infinite amount of sugar into its fixed volume of water. So when no more sugar will dissolve, we say the solution is saturated. This saturation point is different at different temperatures and the higher the temperature, the more sugar can be held in solution. Different temperatures result in different sweets once cooled. You may have seen the term softball in recipes for fudge or hard crack for toffees, which were coined before thermometers were used. Softball, for example, is achieved when the sugar syrup has been heated to between 112 and 116 degrees Celsius, when the sugar concentration will be about 85%. It forms a soft ball which will flatten out after a few seconds when you drop it into cold water. Caramelised sugar is pure sugar that's been heated to 170 degrees Celsius and this is when things get really interesting. At that temperature, the sucrose begins to break down and form other compounds. Even food chemists do not completely understand the process, but the results are delicious. Caramelised sugar has complex flavours and chemicals, such as furans, which are nutty, diacetal, which is intensely buttery, maltol, which is toasty, and fruity tasting ethyl acetate. Once the sweets start to cool, there's more sugar in the solution than is naturally possible, and this is called supersaturation. It's very unstable, and the sugar molecules are desperate to crystallise. Accidentally knocking or stirring the solution will result in all the sugar starting to crystallise. Sweets come in two categories, crystalline and non-crystalline. Fudge and fondants are example of crystalline sweets, so these are soft and have a slightly grainy crystalline texture. Lollipops and hard-boiled sweets are examples of non-crystalline sweets, and the way the sugar is orientated is pretty similar to the way silica is ordered in window glass. For non-crystalline sweets, there are a few tricks to make sure there are no unwanted crystals. You could prevent crystallisation by ensuring that other types of sugars are in the way. Smaller sugars, like fructose and glucose, can hinder sucrose from forming crystals, or you could add corn syrup, which consists primarily of starch, a string of glucose molecules which has the same effect. Fats like butter also get in the way of the sucrose molecules that are trying to lock together to form crystals. Toffee owes its smooth texture to plenty of butter. Comparing the two sweets, they couldn't be more different, but they're created using the same starting material and the same technique. There's a real art to making sweets, but there's quite a bit of chemistry too. For more edible experiments and the chemistry behind certain foods, check out my other videos and demo sheets.